Hello and welcome to Light Your Life. I'm Tina Marie and it's so awesome to be with you again. Today I'd love to share a spark of wisdom, which are our shorter podcast episodes. And today around the power of appreciation. Have you ever found your life in a place where it feels stuck? Have you ever found that it feels like life can be more draining and more effort? Maybe things just don't seem to be going your way. Maybe you have a lot of hopes and dreams and you're using the power of manifestation and it just doesn't seem as though life itself is answering the calling and there's a disconnect. Well, I've discovered that the power of appreciation is this amazing gravity field that brings everything to our soul, everything to our life that we as humans can simply effort to try and produce. And whenever we put in the power of appreciation, then that wonderful flow begins to make itself apparent. Again, ease comes in, effortlessness comes in, magic comes in, and Overall, we feel amazing because we have put into play the power of appreciation in our own lives. So what I'd love to share today are some of the ways that I utilize the power of appreciation in ways that we coach our clients here at Bonfire Coaching to utilize the power of appreciation to do that very thing, to take whatever feels stuck, efforting, frustrating, Maybe even we're experiencing feelings of depression or anxiety, maybe fear, maybe loneliness. Whenever we're feeling what we call here at Bonfire, any of the below the line emotions, this one strategy can shift all of it to what we call above the line. And that's when the flow starts happening again. And we feel like we're part of that flow as opposed to just a wind. Oh, sorry, just a leaf in the wind. So here we go. I want to give you some of these wonderful strategies and you get to put these into play into your own life and then give us feedback. Let us know how it's working for you so we can share in that wonderful celebration moments in your life as well. So basically what we're doing is we want to train our minds to start looking at what is good in life, what is right in life. And some of us would call that positive thinking. Yet I want to give us the real strategies on how to employ that positive thinking and have it work for us as opposed to just maybe in the morning meditating and doing a gratitude list and then hoping that everything's going to work out. We need to be a little more active, participatory in using the power of appreciation. And here are some of those wonderful strategies. If you happen to be a business owner, a leader, or even if you are an employee in a team, you can ask for this to happen with your leadership. And if you are the leader, you can begin to have these types of interactions with your clients. So what we do here at Bonfire is a huddle. And I ask all of my smaller teams, all of my small business owners, you know, if you're, if you're running a business, you know, from startup all the way to, let's say about 10 to $50 million. This is where the mentality of a smaller group can really be a power source. And what we do is huddle in the morning and we'd huddle in the afternoon. If you have shift workers, if you have people coming off shift and new people coming on shift, or maybe your business transfers from one type of work in the morning and there's a clean delineation in the middle of the day and then you have a second half, you can do a huddle twice a day. Some of my business owners even do a huddle very beginning of the morning, at the beginning of the second shift, and then at the end of the day. So fit in the huddles based on your workflow. And the idea there is that you're wanting to have a, sus a, a sustainable feeling of energy, richness, and connectivity. So what we ask and do is at the beginning of a huddle, we want to go around and each person is going to appreciate another person. Now, this works really well when you have anywhere from five to six people in a huddle. Whenever we get beyond that, then what you want to do is shift it to be people can, you know, you call one person or two people in that huddle to appreciate another person within that huddle. 
and that way it, it becomes more timely. You you have time management there, right? But if you do have a smaller huddle, like many of our office, uh, many of our businesses that we coach do, everybody can go around and appreciate each one of the members. Now, the secret to this is it needs to be specific in that appreciation moment. Not like, I just love how awesome we all are working together. That's great, yet absolutely not specific. So a specific could look like, you know what, Rachel, I really appreciated how you greeted that customer that came in yesterday and they seem to be on edge and not really happy. You, you really controlled that conversation, brought it all up to an energy rich state. And I heard the words you used, you know, awesome job way to really shift them and have them be a very happy customer by the time they left. That would be specific. So in your appreciation to anyone, we all resonate with specificity so that we can really anchor in on something we really did. And was it noticed? Was it seen and appreciated? So in our huddles, we do that I also take that into the family unit. So in the family unit, sometimes we do get to those places where we struggle with one another, or maybe the tension is in the family or in the household for whatever reason. Something to break that tension very quickly is verbal appreciation to each other. And growing up with my kids, whenever <laughs> parents were always growing up, right? Whenever my kids were growing up, and let's say one of my children say Maddie would come and say, I'm, you know, Michael upset me and I want, you know, basically she wanted to tell me what was going on so we could come to a strategy. Her intent was I'm unhappy about this. I will need to talk to somebody about it. And what do I do? All perfect communication. However, I would pause either one of my kiddos <laughs> and I'd say, okay, I want to hear you. You're very important. And this is important to you. I can tell first can you tell me three things that you appreciate about your brother before we talk about this one thing that isn't really good? And it would stall her out. And, you know, even when Michael would need to appreciate Maddie, if he was coming to me about something, it stalls out our mind and has us really reach to the higher mind and say, okay, what are three things that I appreciate about him? And this is also something that I need to get off my chest, as opposed to just going into that moment of this is what I need to get off my chest. We can really create a disconnect and a separation thinking that that person's bad and wrong. And this is the justification for my thoughts in that way. So if there's ever a time where you want to air something that needs to have courageous conversations, we want to develop the habit to begin with this is what's working. This is what's good. This is what I appreciate about you. And this is something I'd also like to talk about, right? You may notice that I'm using the word and. So whenever we use the word and in between those appreciation moments and the thing that may be of discord, that makes both sides of that equation correct and right and valid. Whenever we begin with appreciation and we say the word, but then we disvalue the appreciation and we make what was going to come next, which is typically that complaint or that thing that doesn't feel as though it's honoring and we need to get that off our chest. It makes that part of the equation more important than the appreciation. So we want to train ourselves to use the word and instead of but in a communication so that both sides of that equation are valued. Isn't that awesome? Okay. So these are ways that we can begin with appreciation, begin with what's good, begin with where progress is, begin with what's working, and then also have that space in order to talk about what also needs attention and communication that may not feel so great. That's where progress can come. That's where not feeling attached to this in such a painful way or wanting to control the outcome of a conversation really starts to take form. Now, other ways that we appreciate and can appreciate. And of course, I'm speaking from my own experience so that you can learn and I am happy to share is that I love to write people notes. I'm actually probably the note queen around here. And that's where I would write appreciation notes. I'd write text notes. I really appreciate that you did this. Thank you so much. It was noticed. I really saw how you went over and above. above. That was just so magnificent. I really appreciate you. And I'd write those on post-its. Um, also, I write thank you cards. I'm one of those people that since I was real little, I would be the person who would write 
letters, I'd write note cards, I'd write and send birthday cards, anniversary cards, congratulation cards, celebratory for whatever reason, cards and pop those in the mail. Now, isn't it fun to even today, right, to to receive a card in the mail that somebody thought of us and put their words in there and signed it and really allowed themselves to express what that is in in them that they saw in us. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that amazing? I know I love to receive these wonderful cards. I love to receive notes. Um, And recently, for those that follow me on social and those that know me personally, my little dog passed away. And that was so heartbreaking. One of the hardest things I've ever gone through. I, I knew that she was, you know, older and we'd be facing this time of her life. And for the last couple of years, I prepared myself for it as much as I could and given her a lot of time and attention and love and appreciation to take in, you know, more videos and pictures and all those things. Yet whenever the time came, boy, was it painful. It was so painful. So, and my little dog is just my joy. So uh, for those that are watching on the YouTube channel, um, I'm just going to hold up a picture here of Tara. She, this is one of my favorite pictures of Tara. My pet sitter uh, took that picture of her. She's just so adorable. And now I know she's just an angel watching over me. And I'm grateful for that as well. And this is another picture. This is her when she was a puppy. She was just a little bitty ragamuffin, but Tara, you know, stole my heart whenever she was little. So why do I mention Tara in the passing? You know, some of the most tender times that we feel vulnerable are those times of loss and grief. And I had a dear client who wrote a note and sent flowers to me at that time. <clears throat> that meant the world to me when David did that. It just, you know, of course I cried, yet the connectivity there is I was seeing the experience of my life right now is being appreciated by someone else and they're offering their sincere condolences and communications to me. Whenever we're in those painful points in our life, this appreciation is able to be received. Whenever we're in those celebratory moments, not so much. Have you noticed that? Like whenever we really have something that we have kicked ass on, we have done so good. Maybe we graduated. Maybe we wrote a book. Maybe we launched a podcast. Maybe we started a business. Maybe we overcame something. Maybe we, like last year, I did 75 hard, which was rah, so hard. When these things in our life, whenever we really show up and become a new version of ourselves in this way, I find it interesting that whenever people appreciate us, whenever they acknowledge us, whenever they write us cards or letters or texts or something of that nature, so there's something inside of us that can show up and go, no, it's okay. <laughs> and we don't take it in. So let's all agree that this year we're going to allow that celebration to come full in and go, yeah, I did that. It was so freaking rocking awesome. I did it. Yes. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. And you get to celebrate with your peers and your friends and your family who are wanting to appreciate you for what you did and what you accomplished, right? So notes, be it posted notes that are just left randomly on somebody's desk or in their seat, or maybe in a place that you could do a random appreciation. I do this every now and then in the women's restroom in our building. <clears throat> I appreciate people who clean up after themselves. And I'll say, you know, in a post, thank you so much for keeping our space clean and tidy. I really appreciate you. I don't know who's going to read that note, but whoever does, I truly am appreciating their efforts. So notes, post-it notes, thank you cards, and ways to appreciate one another. It fills each person with so much aliveness. I don't know that I've ever met one person that has ever said, you know, like you appreciate me way too much. <laughs> you know, could you just to stop appreciating me? You know, you send me way too many notes and that, you know, kindness that you exude and, and everything that you're doing there to have me feel special and seen, you know, it's just too much. I don't want you to do it anymore. I have never <laughs> heard of anybody doing that. So this is my calling and this is the culmination of today's spark of wisdom. I'd love us all to really stretch and challenge ourselves and appreciate three people today that you haven't appreciated before. 
Maybe it's a stranger. Maybe it's yourself. <laughs> Maybe it's a coworker, a friend, a family member. And stretch each day to really embrace the power of appreciation more and more and more and more in your life. And I guarantee, I guarantee whatever feels disturbing, heavy, overwhelming, frustrating, anxious making, maddening, will dissipate. With the power of appreciation, your life will open up, beauty will come in its place, effortlessness, serendipities, coincidences, opportunities, luck, all these beautiful things of power and joy that we so want and deserve in our life more and more and more will come in a beautiful flow. I guarantee it. And I'd love to hear from you because once you employ this and start doing this, the power of appreciation in your life, I really want to hear how you notice the transformation because it will transform. I guarantee it. So thank you so much for listening to the Light Your Life podcast. My ask is that you share this wonderful podcast with other people who you also love. That would be a sign of appreciation, wouldn't it? And then find us online at Bonfire Inner Circle. The Bonfire Inner Circle is where people like us gather to appreciate one another, have new sparks of wisdom in our days, great wisdom to employ and strategies and methods to shift our life and really find that more that we all seek inside and experience it. And then we get to celebrate each other. So find on Facebook, the Bonfire Inner Circle, and then find Bonfire Coaching on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and follow us and connect. We'd love to hear from you. And if there are any guest requests, people that you would love to hear from and have us interview, you think, oh, this person would be great on the Light Your Life podcast, go ahead and write us at hello at bonfirecoaching.com, hello at bonfirecoaching.com, and let us know your thoughts. Then if you are interested in coaching, how our coaching, our methods, our strategies, our protocols, our tools can help transform your life, be it your life overall, be it your business, as we rock at business coaching, or your career, because you say, mm, maybe I want a new career, or maybe this career that I'm in, I may not be playing the game all that great. And how do I advance myself and my personal brand inside my company and inside my industry? If any of these wants and needs are inside of you, Bond for Our Coaching is the place to land. We are an amazing family of coaches, not just me, there's a whole family of coaches here. And the network that we have of so many positive people is extraordinary and global. And you want to be part of this fire because it is transforming not only each one of our clients, but their families and the ripple effect that they have in their communities, in their companies, in their lives, and across this beautiful globe as it starts with each one of us to think above the line and use these strategies to shift so that our lives become fulfilled and examples of the tools working so other people can see that joy and say, I want what you have. And that's how a wonderful, beautiful fire spreads, the fire of the soul. So thank you again for listening to the Spark of Wisdom, the Power of Appreciation, and subscribe to the Light Your Life podcast so you don't miss anything. I'm Tina Marie St. Cyr, founder of Bonfire Coaching, and I am so grateful to be with you and help you. Can't wait to get to know you better and get to meet all your dreams and help you make that progress. Until next time, this has been the Light Your Life podcast. Go put in the power of appreciation today.